Okay, we're using our tracer attachment to do the bore on this hub, and I just wanted to show you that I have a uh, standard mandrel down here that is set up for three quarter inch per foot, and I've got that dialed in so that the uh, taper attachment or tracer attachment can follow that. And by putting the handle, I come in and the stylus reads alongside that pattern there at center line and follows that taper and tells the boring bar up here to cut that taper. All right, now let's bring you an overall picture of it. Okay, I got you up here. You're gonna be limited on the space that you can see because I can't back the camera up anymore from the elevation that you're at, but it gives a good view of it. All right, so we pull the handle and the tracer attachment comes in. And then when we want to advance our cut, we'll be cranking in on our wheel here or cranking out on our wheel because we're boring, so we're cranking out. This here is just a chunk of lead that I have wedged in here so that it, it eliminates the vibration that I'm, I was picking up on my tool bit. And it's doing really well. It's locked in here tight. This is not just leaning in here. It's not going to fall out. I've made, I don't know, eight, nine passes already. So we're, it's perfectly safe up here it's extreme but it's what I had laying around and it takes care of the job without any incidents so and that's what that's what it's all about is is being confronted with a problematic uh, situation where you have something not performing right and you're able to do something to your setup to create the cut you desire and that's what we've done all right now I've uh, I just checked this. Uh, we're starting to we're we're getting our inside micrometer and three quarter inch per foot. This is four inches long, so it's uh, basically four inches here and three and three quarters here. And we're kind of working our way on out. And uh, we got our our uh, we've got our hub cleaned up and kind of deburred. And we we've got a couple inches here to make up, and we're sneaking up on it. Uh, because uh, we, we only want to do this once and we're trying to plan out how much or what diameter we're going to create here because this is going to get a couple well beads out here which is going to shrink this whole thing uniformly there's going to be a well two well beads on the outside two well beads on the inside it's going to be pretty uniform on shrinking this thing all together so um, we're, we're just kind of looking at that whole picture right there Okay, we're gonna give this one uh, one shot with you riding up there on the laid bed there. We don't know how much it might move around or shake uh, uh, the, uh, the, the camera itself. Now this was yesterday we were turning, so we're gonna come in and we're gonna just touch and reestablish uh, our dimension here, just double checking to make sure that we... All right, that's close enough to figure that uh, that's where it was at. All right, we're gonna take another 20 thousands. And here we go. We bored almost all of this out to the mi just slightly under the minor diameter of the taper, so we didn't have a whole lot of material to move. It would be nice to have a bigger bar for this setup here, but I don't get into too much large bores. If I did, I would go ahead and make up another bar. But the, this is a bar left over from a set, or a, this is a the largest bar in my set for doing. Uh, propeller bores and uh, you know I do want up to two inch propeller bore and this actually um, fits fits the uh, bore size as as large as you can get away with at the minor diameter and having room to play it most of the time you're boring it out from uh, a smaller size out to the larger size where somebody has the perfect uh, pitch and and uh, combination blade that will run good on their boat but the bore is undersized for their shaft so I'll, I'll bore and key a shaft I can swing up to 29 inch in the, in the gap here and that's what the, these bore these bars 
have been designed for and I had them hanging around for. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna take a couple passes here, and we'll bring you in when we get out to the diameter where we're really concerned on uh, uh, seeing if we can improve uh, our finish even better than we're getting right now, which is actually looking better than the sample bore that we have in the part we're replacing. Okay, we're doing a fit up, and looks like we're right down at the nitty gritty here. And it looks like we're about 25 thousandths shy of uh, being all the way or where the other one measures up in there. It's about 400 that registered in there. And we've taken our mics here and just barely getting them started in here on the major diameter. And we're coming up with um, 3 inches, um, 985 or so. So we're about 15 thousandths under the the nominal which is which is four inch and the other one in there registered just a little bit under four inch you know four or five thousands um so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna bring this in and we're just gonna take a spring cut and see if we can better that 1018 finish that we got right there it's like a terry finish the standard finish that you get on regular coal roll and we're going to come out a couple thousands just under where we were and we're going to see if we're that's just barely rubbing okay and there's one under what we took okay we're gonna we're gonna the spring cut will be almost two thousands and uh, whatever it is it is we're gonna consider it good there we go Okay, we're gonna let this run through and then we're gonna polish it with some paper and we're gonna put this setup away. We'll bring in our straight bar from here with an in, uh, a tool bit with a, uh, an, an angle front and back and we're gonna break the surfaces at both ends of this thing uh, while it's in here. Okay, you can see in here, this is almost like powder. It's just barely, barely skimming across. It's a pretty uniform, but it's still got the 1018 Terry finish, so I don't think we're going to do anything about that. So we're going to kiss this, that other side there with a chamfer, and uh, we might actually put a little bit of lapping compound just to kind of get a, a good feel of um, uh, how it's mating up with the, uh, the hub itself. It won't hurt to have a little bit smoother surface than what we have right there. Okay, we've got to reverse the direction now. There we go. All right, this is the bar on, on this side, the, the uh, standard compound side of the lathe. And uh, we're just gonna be kissing off about a 30 second here. All we wanna do is just get rid of that real sharp edge on here. Okay, now we're gonna go all the way in and we're gonna reach in on the other side. So I'm gonna stop it so I can really get a close look at the uh, point here right there there we go Okay, I think we're going to do just a quick lap on it so that we can uh, actually check. It'll check out the uh, the Browning hub as well as our our weld 
our slug that we're going to weld in. Okay, I got uh, my paper folded in half, twisted around a quarter inch rod with a saw cut in the middle of it, and this is uh, this is my my kind of flapper wheel here, and uh, we're just going to stick it in the middle here. All right. Okay, another quick check of our fit here. And, uh, well, let me wipe off the, uh, there's a little bit of oil on this, just from the oil that we've been putting in the bore. All right, I like that. Now, it doesn't rock or anything else in here. We're going to go ahead and put a little bit of lapping compound on here and just, you know, get the overall. We can see where it was hitting hard here, and we look at the imperfections in the other bore, and we can see that it was making more contact at the minor diameter than it was on the major diameter, and we want it to be more uniform. Okay, this is just 180 grit, and we're just going to put a little bit in here on the bore. Okay, now we're just going to insert this and we're going to rotate it slowly. Now we don't have a 2 and 7 16 slug to put in the center of this thing. So we're not going to be 100% working on this. We just want to make sure that we don't have, there has been hammer dings, pry marks in on this thing. And we're just trying to make sure that all the highs are removed and we're going to have a pretty uniform it's pretty firm to grab a hold of this thing and stick it in there all right let me get some tissue and we're going to wipe it clean kind of look at where what uh what we have as far as marks pretty uniform across there a little bit tougher up here than it is down in here now we have mic this across here and this is closed a little bit so and we can see that it's fine here and fine here on the split lines but it's a little bit light but that's because this is squeezed in here I'm not gonna put a whole lot of stock other than we know that we've taken off a couple high spots and it's gonna be a pretty good fit so we'll wipe that out We'll take a look at what we got in the bore here. And there's pretty close to the same thing. More constant out here. We have one ring in there that's not really making contact and that might actually be... That might be... That's where that interference fit in the bore actually looks like and it might have been hitting rubbing hard there or there but regardless we've got a good good surface contact in there alrighty I kind of like that alright I'm gonna clean this up and uh, we need to put a keyway in here so we gotta go start setting up the shaper to put the keyway in here our K&T uh, index head is not gonna uh, make the stroke length that we need we need four inches and that's only like two and three quarters or so I don't have a three quarter inch brooch so we can't make a mandrel and push broach it so we are gonna single point it in the shaper okay we're coming in here to the shaper for the next phase in our project and that is to go ahead and put a keyway in this bore 
Now we need to set this up on the shaper and we need to create a bar that's going to make our strokes and cut our keyway in this. All right, so what we're going to do first is we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull this off of here. Okay, and this tool bit here we're just going to set out of the way. Now, we, this is a clapper box and, and that's to relieve the tool pressure on the back stroke. So it kind of lifts and then comes down, the push goes against it, then it lifts and push. And that's why they, they call that a clapper box. All right, now this clapper box has got a tool holder in here and has a flange. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make a bar that's gonna mount in here. It's gonna have this flange, it's gonna come back there and then it's gonna have a series of threads. We're gonna go grab one of our nuts off of our draw bars for the K&T, which is a really nice thread and we'll be able to cinch down and we'll, we'll be able to tighten it right down into the clapper box. Now the clapper box can be locked solid in here and we'll just let the bar do the springing on this for the amount of strokes it's going to need and how fast we're actually going to be going. We're not really going to be going that fast. We're going to have it in low speed. So let me uh, put that in speed and we're going to be cutting it about this stroke right here. Okay now I, I, I disconnect the belt. We're belt drive on this machine by the way. Um, and we'll get close-ups as we're running it. Uh, we'll get we'll we'll show you actually the whole thing in operation here. All right, but for right now, I can go ahead and and I can move this by hand, and that's how we're going to be doing all the setup and everything else. We'll be doing it by hand. I'll adjust the stroke, the length of stroke, and all of that. Now we're going to be feeding down with the compound. That is going to create our depth, and we're going to control side to side. That's going to control the width of the key. All right. Now we got these two things out, so it it gives us those shapes we'll be able to take that part of the project into the lathe. Now, let me set this down out of the way here. All right, we gotta pull our, our vise off of here because we're not gonna hold that part in the vise. Um, we, we're gonna need our part back here so that we can have length and stroke of, of the boring bar we're gonna create. So we need, to hold, we need to hold this slug up here. We'll pull that off of there and then we're gonna create a plate that's gonna mount to this uh, block which is the table on the on the shaper and we're gonna have two a hole on each side and then a slot that's gonna be in the radius because we need to go ahead and tilt this so that we can get it straight in line to cut that half of the three-quarter inch per foot because we're gonna put the key parallel with the side because the hub that drives this has got a matching key and we're gonna match that key. After we match that key, then we'll be able to go ahead and put that flange in here and do the three hole pattern which will tighten that that uh, browning taper lock into the hub here itself. After that, then this will be ready to weld into the pieces that we have to put this project together. All right, so I'm gonna grab my, my wrench and I'm gonna pull this off of here. Um, another thing, we're gonna be hanging out here so far and this shaper has always been missing the support foot that comes down. There's a support foot usually that screws up and down and that's what this pad is down here for a foot. Now I originally had, uh, not originally, this is, this is a Acme thread that I had from another project and I thought that one day I would be able to go ahead and incorporate and, and use that. But you know this is five threads per inch and I would probably want something a little bit finer as far as the adjustments on that. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm unsure about making something up for that right now. I'd have to order Acme nuts and things like that. What I do have is a piece of one inch eight thread and I have a pair of nuts. So we're gonna make a plate that bolts into these two pieces here. We're gonna turn a shoulder on the nut so it fits into that plate and then that plate gets bolted up here and that nut will be welded to the plate. So then that's our, our support up and down. The other nut is going to be a jam nut that we'll make to jam it. And then we'll go ahead and machine the end of the thr threads so that we can have a palm or a foot that we'll rub on here. So there's kind of a combination of some things that we got to tool up to be able to cut this key in here. But this shaper is the, is the uh, machine for the job. All right, I'll catch you up when we have everything all made.
we go. Uh, we got a nut in there on our all thread. We got it chucked up. Uh, we want to turn a register so it fits in this plate. It's going to be a lower support for the shaper uh, table. All right. So uh, this is called three pointing four jaw, and show you that we're dead nuts. Just saying. All right, we're calling it a night. We are completely set up and ready to start cutting this keyway tomorrow. Let me show you what I did today. I kind of set up a jig <clears throat> that will mount to the knee of the uh, shaper and can pivot and give me an angle, positive or negative. And uh, we we've just got a rough. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put indicators in here and and stroke the bore and uh, get the right um, running uh, um, on it. Yeah, I went ahead and I got a few little marks there, but we're going to be cutting the key on that, so I'm not worried about that. I mean, it's minute. Um, all right, uh, here's a look at, I'm, I'm a little rusty, but there's my vertical 7018. Um, I created a foot underneath. Um, that foot bolts in to underneath here. Uh, we have a locking nut here, and then another nut down here faced off, so that rests across this... Uh, this foot here or this support and uh, that takes up any overhang and the pressure uh, the other thing I, com I created a boring bar tighten the set screw there to tighten the uh, 3 8 I, I made it for 3 8 I was gonna mill this out and actually use one of these uh, keyway slaughters but I, uh, I figured it might be a bit much uh, for this little size bar here and uh, this is a nut off of one of my draw bars, and this tightens down. This is a hole to keep it from rotating or to rotate it to line it up uh, square. All right. Um, when everything else is ready to rock and roll, uh, we let some tension on the belt there. And this is about the speed of the stroke we're going to be running. We'll get it lubed. It is lubed up, but we'll get more lube on it, and we'll be putting a keyway in there tomorrow. All right, and that's just sandwiched in there. There you are. <laughs> 